may not win that, but at least you go home. But if you are aggressive and you're violent and you're defensive, you risk the chance of not coming home. Now, is that right? No, not necessarily. If you're innocent. But your conduct can determine whether you go home or not. And mama wants you home, and daddy wants you home, and brother and sister wants you home, and fighting with the police is not going to get you there. That doesn't mean that police are, the law is always right, but it must be respected. I must count it in the right way. That's a way to settle matters legally and lawfully. But it's never right and it's never good to try to handle it on the street. And so, before you ever come to that, have your mind made up. I'll pay a ticket, give it $100 or $200 or whatever it is, any day, they get shot. And therefore, it ain't worth arguing over tea. And the police pulled me over one time and it was that night I was in Sumter and taking a member some medication after evening service I was coming back uh, home and I got to a stop sign it wasn't a car in sight it was three directions I didn't see a car anywhere and I pulled up to that sign and as far as I knew I stopped but I ever did it did and the police pulled me over. He said, sir, did you say stop? I said, yes, sir. He said, you're ready. I said, I'm sorry. I'm all right. And where are you going? Well, I just took some medicine. I'm, I'm going home from church. He said, just next time, uh, instead of slowing down, stop. I said, yes, sir. And he said, you don't follow me. All right. And I was as polite as I could be. I had gotten my Bible and put it up on the dash. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure he see it. Had my hands on the steering wheel in full sight. Windows down. And guess what? I went home at it. And so, uh, make sure that we don't harm ourselves physically by poor conduct and by provocative conduct. Paul and Silas had no reason to be in prison. Had no reason to be beaten. They were innocent. But what were they doing? Praying and singing in prison. No cussing. No shaking trying to tear the jail up. Praying and singing to the Lord. And then, of course, everybody in there, including the people of the jail, and in the converting the jailer and his whole family by how they conducted themselves. Suicide was wrongly considered by the jailer. He thought it was all the way out. But in verse <coughs> number 27 of Acts 16, when that man woke up and pulled that sword out and would have killed himself, Look at the last part. Supposing that the prisoners had been fled. Had he killed himself, he would have done it for nothing. They were all there. So many times when we do things and when you hit us and we go do something, drinking, using drugs, or rebelling right away from home, whatever it might be, we have to consider all the options. <laughs> We have an idea in our head because of the trouble we're going through. We're not making clear that we need somebody to say, do thyself no harm. I tell all our young people when they leave and go off to college, do you have my cell phone number in your phone? I don't care where you go, you can always call me. If you ever get in trouble, let my number be one that you call. If you think about doing yourself some harm, call me any time of the day or night. Not only that, many jobs pre present stresses and strains that can cause you to hurt yourself or somebody else. If you get picked on at school, you get bullied, there are proper 
proper channels. You have teachers, you have principals, you have these um, security guards, uh, uh, these officers, you have parents, and these things can be uh, negotiated and, and dealt with without you deciding, let me get a gun and go ahead and take care of this business. We used to have a saying, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words do hurt. Words do hurt, but not enough to go and shoot up the school or theater or whatever. We can get over the best not the right answer. In verse 28, Paul cried with a loud voice, saying, Do thyself no harm, for we are all here. It's not like it seems. That even though the door's open, the bands are loose, we haven't gone anywhere. Your problem ain't as bad as you think it is. You can get over this. When you think that you're at the end of the line, I tell our young people, go to the hospital. If that don't fix you, go to the cemetery and read a few tombstones. Those people probably want to change places with you. It's not that bad. It's not worth some of the things young people are telling you to do. Not only that, this man needed spiritual guidance. In verse number uh, 29, he called for a light, sprang in, came trembling, fell down before Paul and Silas, brought them out, and says, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Here's the answer. The answer is not the sword, not the physical sword, but the spiritual sword. It's the answer to our problems. Doesn't mean that all your problems will immediately go away, but you can get your conscience cleared. You can get sin washed away. What must I do to be saved, to be forgiven, to have my sins washed away? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. And they spoke unto him the word of the Lord and to all that are in his house. When you come to worship and you're brought by your family, it is to get you taught, indoctrinated, the word of God instilled in you. So if you come to this point that something happened in your life, that you have the word of God that lets you know, do thyself no harm. It's not as bad as you think. Spiritually, there's forgiveness. There's cleansing available. Jesus died to pay for our sins. So when we come here, we're not just coming to press a few. We're coming to learn to deal with life crisis. And if you keep living, you're going to face off. Not only that, we need to answer to how is it that we can assure ourselves to do no harm. Number one, Jesus has always been and will always be the answer to life problems. In verse 31, he told them to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. He's simply saying, listen, Death is not the answer. Suicide is not the answer. Jesus is the answer. You need to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And you can be saved. You can be delivered. You can be rescued. You are drowning in grief. And in, in, in stress. And in disappointment. And frustration. And the answer is right here. The very people. That you think are inflicting he thought the jailers, I mean the prisoners, such as Paul, <coughs> and Silas and others were his worst problem. They were not his problem, they were his answer. They provided the answer. They were the help he needed. They had the remedy. They had the cure. The older members here in the church, they are not, they're not your problem. They're your help. They are the answer. They've been down that road. They've been there and done that. And thus they are there for you. Don't ever think you in this alone. 
The Bible says here that in the despair of sin, we need the Word of God. In verse number 33, it says, And he took them, this is the, the, the jello, he took them all his house, the same hour of the night, and washed their stripes. That's evidence of repentance. He didn't put those stripes on their backs. His job was to watch them. But when he recognized these were good men in a bad predicament, and they have helped me to get out of my grief, I'm going to try to bandage up and wash their stripes and clean their back up and show my gratitude and my appreciation. I'm ready to serve. I got a different attitude, a different disposition now. And he washed their stripes. <coughs> and then he was baptized. He and all he in a straight way. When we are baptized, the guilt is removed. The humiliation is removed. The shame is removed. Because the past is forgiven. <coughs> our peers may not forget. Our friends, our associates may not forget. But they don't have the power to forgive. Only the Lord can forgive. And when he forgives, he forgets. And thus we don't have to carry the guilt. This man had his sins washed away. Look at verse 34. And when he had brought them into his house, he set meat before them. And watch the next two words. And rejoiced, believing in God with all his house. And one night, he went from being the big man in the jail to being the low man on the ground with a, a sword ready to fall on it. And then up again, a Christian rejoicing with all his house because he's now saved. And he could have been dead just a couple hours before. You and I need to recognize that repentance solves the problem of a guilt associated with sin. And so instead of watering in it, we need to repent of it. If we're not in Christ, we need to be baptized and have our sins washed away. And then live a faithful, dedicated life to be called from labor to reward. Baptism washes away all sins. <coughs> Thus, it pardons the penalty of sinner. What about you today? <coughs> Are you doing yourself in the home? Are you involved in activity that can harm you? Are you around the wrong people? Are you, are you hiding and, and maneuvering, thinking you're going to get by? You need to hear the words of the Lord and put a verse in your life. Have faith in Jesus Christ that he does something for God. <coughs> This man found out that suicide wasn't the answer. The answer was Jesus Christ. Repent of all sins. We put in the humble ourselves to change, to walk down the straight and narrow. This man washed their stripes. Confess Jesus Christ as Lord and put him on in baptism. Because that's when the change takes place. And that's when the conscience is cleared. And that's when we can put behind us the mistakes of our past. We don't have to live in guilt. Sometimes the hardest thing in the world is to forgive ourselves. Others have forgotten about it and moved on. And we still wallowed in the fact that we didn't forget it. Well, we may not ever forget it. But we need to remember this. It's forgiven. And if it's forgiven, I got to forgive myself and I got to move on. Otherwise, depression sits in and hopelessness sits in and we end up harming ourselves either emotionally, physically, spiritually, and even possibly eternally. Do thyself no harm. In Acts 22, in verse 16, Saul of Tarsus had killed good people. Christians 
had done as a lifestyle. And when he met Jesus Christ on the road to Damascus, a conversion took place. And he was baptized by tearing his ballot. Arise and be baptized and wash away your sins, calling on the name of the Lord. And he became one of the greatest preachers this world has ever seen. But he had been a murderer of so many innocent people, men and women. But conversion changed him. And it'll change you and I. If you're in Christ and you haven't been faithful, You've been harming yourself spiritually, getting and missing in and out. Repent of it. That's what the prayer for the saints. And we're going to see you tonight. We just have to say this to thyself, no harm. Come to Jesus. Come now while we stand in sin. Your